Hello, welcome to Genealogy Adventures. I'm Brian. I'm Danya, and today we have a really great show for you guys. Um, we do have a guest that's going to get on with us. Her <laughs> name is Loretta, and she is one of our workers. She, uh, she works with us. Um, Loretta is really great at what she does because I'm telling you, when we can't find something, we call Loretta, and I promise you the next morning... <laughs> Not only does she have the information, but she has started a whole uh, no. monster of stuff. Gross. So, Loretta, pull your camera down some. We can't see your pretty face, lady. Okay. Hey, well, hold on. <laughs> so, while we're waiting for a camera readjustment, so if you'd like to talk a bit, a little bit about what we're going to be covering today? Yes, today, okay, y'all, so, um, okay. <laughs> so this show is going to be very, very, um, uh, for, for newcomers, it may be somewhat confusing, um, but I want you to follow along, because it's going to help you in the long run. Loretta, bring your camera down. I'm trying <laughs> I um, so I see. this today's show is going to be a, a topic could be definitely confusing for for newcomers, but we have images so that you can follow along for intermediate to advanced and ex expert. You're going to know exactly what we're talking about. You're going to know exactly what we're going with this, because this show is about families who have married multiple times and there are different children in each one every time they have kids. And there's always this one mother <laughs> that everybody just wants to call mom. And even in their obituaries, they're like, yeah, that's my mother. But for people like us who are doing the research and we're trying to find these kids and we start to recognize and realize, okay, these birth years are off wrong or these this, this doesn't make any sense. How is this that person's child? And, or the most famous thing, which is what we're going to walk right into right now, is having the same name child in the family. I mean, the exact same name. So with that being said, I'm going to go straight into it. By all means. Um, I just want to say really, really quickly, the, the thing that I really find fascinating about this is, I think it was in the, the 90s or the early 90s where they are talking about blended families. Okay. And they were, journalists were writing about blended families like there was something new. Right. They're not new. No. They've been, I mean, the term is new. The term is new. They've been around pretty much forever. forever. And we're going to be talking about two monsters. Yes. Blended families. That's perfect, Loretta. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. Oh, we get to, oh, thank you. We get to see you. <laughs> so we're getting right. I'm going to open it up, Loretta, by talking about our beloved Ollie. And if we can have image number one, please. So. What you're going to see in image number one is um, a list. Th what this is, is this is going to go into, oh, it's Sadie first. That's right. Yeah. So Sadie Ryans is a woman who was fathered by Augustus Ryans and Lula Morton. And Sadie turned around and she married three different men, Buster Gilliam, Sam, Sam Padgett, and Henry Lee Bowman. Now, the name Ella on the side, we're going to get to that later. That's Henry's other wife. But just know that we're going to get to that later. And just before you and Loretta actually mention it, Bowman is actually a, a derivative spelling of... Bonham. Bonham. B-O-H... B-O-N-H-A-M. -A yes. Yep. So Sadie Ryans, remember that. Sadie Ryans is this wonderful mother, and she had children by all three of these men, Buster, uh, Sam, and Henry Lee. Can you go to the next one? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wait. What? What do you want to do? It is oh, yeah. yeah. So if you can go to image number two. Image number two. Now, image number two is going to be the obituary for Sadie. It's kind of blurry. But basically, in the image, you can see that Sadie had... You got an image pulled up? Let me try to pull it up because I'm, I'm blind, y'all. Um, Sadie is listed with two sets of stepsons, but then she also was leaving behind a set of sons and about 11 daughters. This is a problem. 
if you notice in Sadie's thing, the daughter's names are so many different names. They cover everything from Weaver to Settles to uh, Goldman, and then you have Bowman. There's some Gilliams. And you're looking at that like, huh? <laughs> so you're trying to figure out, like, who are all these kids? At first thought, you're looking at it like, oh, okay, they're married. These are married women, and we're going to put them in. So you, you list all these names down as her children. But as you're finding them and you start finding out that these kids have different, that their years are either really, really close or they're right on top of each other. They're born at the same time or, you know, it's something weird about it. And you're like, oh, God. And Loretta, you can jump in as yes. well. I'm going to say one. I wasn't too phased. I was a little bit phased when I saw this obituary um, for Sadie. But the boys were pretty, at, on the face of things, the boys were really easy to sort out because the boys pretty much had the same name as their father, for the most part. But o On the face. On the face. <laughs> on the face. This, is, this is when we first found these obits, and you know we were feeling pretty confident that this was going to be pretty easy to work out. It was the daughters who were a nightmare because they were all married. These were all their married names, so none of us knew what their maiden names were. And you could see there were already three men in the picture. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Confidentiality in Edgefield should never exist. <laughs> so what, what were your feelings, Loretta, when you saw this long list of names? I, well, I panicked. I panicked at first. And then said, you want to make the assumption that when there's step, so when you think about it, you think step, okay, so they're hers and his between her and her current marriage. We wasn't thinking hers, his, his, and his. Right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. We were not. We were not. So we, we were thinking Sadie, one marriage, new husband, his marriage. So you got, she was married once before, he was married once before, and then we'll just put all the kids together, and then, of course, they had the kids together. But we found out it wasn't quite that simple. Not at all, by any stretch of the means. No, so. it, it really wasn't. Matter of fact, it was so not simple that it took us about a week. And we're still working. And we're still working on it. We're still working. Because this took us all, we started doing this all last week. Yep. And we really got it kind of down pat today, this morning, mm -hmm. well enough so that we could talk to you guys about it. And um, so because it's just, it's a, it's a mess. But then can you put up the next image, please? And as he's, as Deezy's doing that, what I was going to say is what's actually really lovely about all of this is... And the obituaries, a lot of the siblings are calling each other, they're referring to each other as though they're full-blooded siblings. So they're not distinguishing between who's a half-sibling, who's adopted, who's a step-sibling, who's a full-blooded sibling. They're all siblings. Which, you know, mm -hmm. paints a picture of a very harmonious, kind of happy, large, extended, blended family. But from a genealogical point of view... It's hell on earth yes it's okay. a nightmare absolute nightmare right so here is the 1940 census in edgeville south carolina and basically what you're looking at is sadie who and in 1940 by this time she's married to her second husband which is henry bowman okay so her first husband was john wiley gilliam her second husband is henry bowman her third husband is sam padgett but this is her, her second husband, and this is when we found out there was a problem. So basically, it's listing Henry and Sadie, husband and wife, but then there's a daughter who's listed as a Bowman, and then there are child, a son listed as a Gilliam, and then it goes back to Bowman again, Katie, and then it goes back to Gilliam again five times over, and then it goes jumps right back to Bowman again and again, Martha. So as you can see, we had two sets of children. That's when we realized, okay, well, there are two sets of children here. And we needed to figure them out. Now, as far as we are, when you're first looking at it, when you're first trying to make sure it makes sense to you, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, she just had children with Henry and she had children with, with, um, with her first husband and that's how that went. Well, uh -huh. sure, that's, that's how that goes. But that wasn't how this go. And um, because Martha seems to coincide with one of her other kids. And it just didn't, not necessarily one of her other kids, 
but while she was married to someone else. Now, we don't want to think that mom has stepped out or that dad has stepped out. We never want to go that route. We never want to do that. We know it's a possibility, but we never want to take that step. So, and we didn't want to take that step with this one, but at this point, it was looking like she had stepped out on her husband. So we had to do more research. And the way we went about doing that research, we started looking at the obituaries, we started taking the kids, finding death records, things of that nature, and trying to figure out exactly which way we needed to go, which route was the best route for us to go. Let's see if these kids are listing who daddy is and who mom is and who's the half sibling and who's not the half sibling. And then we got to, um, is it Bert? That's when we got to Bertha. Because there's 18 kids. God, yeah, I didn't count. <laughs> I didn't count either. <laughs> and that's between all of them. So all 18 aren't Sadie's, but the, in total, between it's 18 children. There's 18 children. 18 children. So that was, and I think we found obits for most of them, and then we found additional. I think we we got about. If 20. we don't have obits, we have more information. We we know where they are. But we must have accessed about twenty obits. Yeah, and yeah. Sadie's all of her, all of the husbands. Yeah, yeah. And most of the kids. Right. Most of the kids. So yeah. then, should I pull up image three? I mean four. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so pull up image four. So like I said, we were going through all of that. And once we go through all of that, then we're, we're, we're at, what you see now is Bertha, her name is Bertha um, Bowman Roundtree. She married and her, uh, where is it, that's right. So this was the first one that actually threw a monkey wrench in the works because we actually found out that the Henry Bowman that Sadie married had had a previous marriage with a woman called, and this is the only time her name has actually ever appeared in any of the family obituaries, Ella Mackimore, right. which we have since found out was Mac Lamore. Right. Mac Lamore. So yeah. that's the Ella that you saw at the first in the first um, image, Henry's wife, and Bertha was Henry's. I mean, was Ella's child. So we're thinking, okay, yeah, we need to go this route. Some of these kids don't belong to Sadie. But then we started to read down in her thing, in her obituary, and we saw that she didn't tell, say that the sisters were not her sisters. That's perfect, DZ. Gosh. Um, as you can see, it says 11 sisters, and they're new names. Ida Mae was not in there at first. She wasn't in there at first with Neither Sadie, was yeah. Essie, neither was Hattie. We had a different marriage for Lucille, so, so, so Seuss or Suswell was a completely new name. Yeah, a totally new name. And um, Ida, Josephine was, did not exist. Ida Mae had, even though she was a t she married a Tate, it was spelled differently in two other It was two. And we just started to lose it. We were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is it 11 kids when we, that's not what we thought. Yeah. So this is where our issue came in. And it just started getting worse and worse. And, and you had boys that was popping up out of nowhere. And we was like, what's going on? And But where this no. was also really, really helpful is, Deezy, if you can just pop, just scroll up just a little bit. That's it, that's perfect. So t where this is really, really invaluable is it actually gives the daughters and stepdaughters married names, but it also tells you where they were living at the date of this obituary. That's right. So we were able to pick up the trail for quite a few of them. So That's you see right. Philadelphia, there's New Hampshire, there's Washington, D you know, they're, they're just all over the they place. They were everywhere. The children, they were everywhere. So we had a huge, huge project from one family. Now... It, we, did, we still didn't know that this project was going to be as big as it was, that it was going to take three people. Mm -hmm. So, um, And is there anyone in this list of the boys whose name changed in the end? I don't think so. No. William, William was a Gilliam. So that, that was fine. Well, CB, because then yeah. we found out who CB was. True. Yes, yeah, CB turned out to be Cornelius. Yes, Cornelius. So... That's where we are. That's where we were with this. And then um, we moved on to another obituary.
go to the next one, please, Daisy. We're going to try to get through this so y'all can see it, and then we're going to look at stuff. So the next obituary was Emma Irvin. And Emma was married again, and she had her sets of kids, and then all of a sudden we're seeing these siblings and sisters. And now Mary Tate is now Tut, and Martha is now a noble. And then you got now Katie, instead of her being a Covington, is a butler. And they're still in Greenwood. She names that Joe Paget is her stepfather. So this means that now Sadie's now married to Joe Paget. And Sadie is, you know, this is her stepfather. But she's still screaming off 11 half sisters. Half sisters. Okay? <laughs> she's still doing it. And when she starts, oh no, those were her children that I was naming at the top. I'm sorry. So her siblings start coming in again and. It's still the same set of siblings. There's no difference. The only difference is now everybody is considered half sibling, whereas Bertha put them as full siblings. Full siblings. Yeah. And at this point, we still weren't sure. Who, we weren't sure that we had the right children with the right sets of parents. So we knew kind of who the mother was. Well, because once we knew that we were dealing with both Ella and Sadie. This is just this is just keeping it on that level. Yeah. Um, the Bowman, the Bowman family level. Right. Because um, Ella could have been any one of these girls' mothers. Exactly. Point. Yeah. Point. Ella could have been any one of these extra girls' mothers, um, and then now we're looking at this particular obituary, and we now have a new father point, it pointed into the picture. So he could be anybody's daddy at this yeah. point, and we're looking at this like, oh, oh, God. You know, we don't know what we're going to do. So, well, we we just knew we were going to have to sit down and um, we called Loretta. And we, we started, because Loretta is, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, when you want to know something, Loretta will find it. She is a beast at it. <laughs> if you need to find an obit and you're struggling. Yes, it's Loretta who you come to. But um, we, so we started talking with Loretta. And Loretta seems to have this calming voice that even though she'll tell us in the midst of her calming voice I can't stand y'all y'all get on my nerves always calling me with this crap <laughs> but never but it's always calming and always done with a very loving tone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then she proceeds to work it out with us so that's that's why we love Loretta so much so actually, DC, if we can go back to the first image, if you don't mind. So I'm going back to Sadie. Yeah. yeah. So for instance, in you know, the, the obits, this name, Martha Kay, just kept popping out, popping out. She was always mentioned, but she was always mentioned as a daughter. I, I don't think I ever saw her mentioned as a step. Never. She was never mentioned as a stepdaughter for Sadie. For Sadie. So we thought she was Sadie's, Sadie's child. Sadie's child with the bone uh -huh. man. Which, Loretta, you're really good at the chronology of this. You go. Because um, by having Martha as Sadie's child, it looked as though Sadie was having children with Buster Gilliam. She was married to Buster Gilliam first, then having children with Mr. Bowman, and then having children with Sam Paget, and then bizarrely having one last one with Mr. Gilliam. Yeah. Which just... It, it, it just didn't make sense. At all, at all. And then Loretta, I'll, I'll let Loretta, you, I'll let, Loretta, yeah. I'll let you talk through this because you did a really good job of just looking at the years the children were birth and born, and we um kind of broke it down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, just taking the kids in chronological order, we know that dates of birth, uh, the, the birth of the children, they're not always going to be right. Sometimes they're going to be way off. But in this particular case, putting them in chronological order meant one of two things: either Sadie stepped out and had Martha, or Martha was actually Henry Bowman's child with his first wife. And it turns out that because of Bowman being misspelled, I shouldn't say misspelled, there was two ways to spell it. We couldn't find a death record on Ella. We couldn't find these kids, these um, first set of kids with Henry. So we found them and we found a death record for Ella what was important about Ella's death record is when she died, 
that's when Martha would have been born. Martha was born before uh, Ella died. And Martha would have been the baby. She would have been Ella's baby. And she would have been about three years old. So when Ella passed away, Sadie took on uh, raising Martha as her own. And Martha, that is the only mother that she ever knew. So that's why she was always listed as Sadie's daughter and not Sadie's stepdaughter. She was never referred to as a step by any of the kids in any of the obituaries Mm -hmm. because Sadie married Henry Bowman and says, she has no mom. This is my child and I'm going to raise her as such. But she was actually the baby of Henry's first marriage. Yep. And then starting last night, and I'll let Donia talk us through this, she gave me gray hairs because she's like, there's a second he- there's a second Henry. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, so we're doing the research, and, and we're trying, we're separating these names and separating these children, and nobody is mentioning the fact that on, on one of these obituaries, it's listing Henry Bowman Sr. or Henry Bowman Jr. and Henry Lee Bowman. So I finally just came out. And I'm like, okay, is everybody not seeing, is y'all not seeing that there are two Henrys? So both of them got quiet on the phone. Brian got extremely quiet. Like he wouldn't even talk anymore <laughs> for a second. <laughs> it was me and Loretta. And, and we're looking like, who is this other Henry? But what made it more difficult is that as we were looking at these um, obits, only one Henry was mentioned in the, in the other Hobbits. There was Henry Lee and Henry Bowman were all both were mentioned only one time together. in one person's obit together, and I think that was Bertha's. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. mm-hmm. Everybody else's, you either saw Henry, or, Henry or you Lee. saw Henry Lee, or it's Henry Lee. It didn't matter. And we were sitting here. It took us till today to till find today. out to this morning to actually figure out that there are two Henrys and that uh-huh. Henry Lee was Sadie's child, but that Henry, just the one Henry, was Ella and the Bowman, Henry Bowman, the father's child. The father, that, that was his firstborn child named after him. Right. And the reason why we could not find them, because you figure all these children were born in the 1920s, between 19, sometime in the 20s, and 30s, and we couldn't find them in the 1930 census. Well, you know, with Greenwood being pretty much up to date, these kids got to be here somewhere. So I, I was determined last night that I was going to find <laughs> these kids. And, then, and that's what the problem was. We couldn't find them on census records. We were like, who? What? How does? How do whole families disappear? And of course, I started getting PTSD because that's what that's what Yeldales do. And I, and at that point, I gave up. Because I, that's what Yale does do. They disappear and they don't they don't return again. And that's when Loretta was like, okay, I'm going to find them. Because the thing is, we know the family names in, a, in old 96. You know, we're really, we know names that we're not familiar with, which are very, very rare. And it was Mackie Moore. We just couldn't make any sense of it because we have Mackies in our family. So mm. that could have been one misspelling. I thought maybe they were trying to say she was a Mackie who married more, maybe afterwards, but then we knew when she died, so that was impossible. I thought, well, maybe her name was Moore. And then it was like last night when we were just talking about the, the phonetics of it. We're like, oh, Macklemore. Right. And then that's, that kind but of- But what this was, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna what say- What I that. did, one of the tricks, one of the tricks I did, I don't know, we might be delayed because I lost my connection there. Um, one of the tricks I did to find Ella is uh, something that I do, and I know Brian does it too, and probably Donya too, when we research, you have to find little unique ways to outsmart the census. Because when you put in Mel, um, Ella Bowman, we're looking for a death record for Ella Bowman. We can't find it. Nowhere. Couldn't find it anywhere. Didn't exist. But I was like, okay, she has to be here somewhere. They are, like you said, whole families don't go missing. Yes, what sir. I did was I went on South Carolina death records. I typed in, I went on the death record site. I didn't use Ancestry. I opened up South Carolina death records, the whole, that section. I typed in Ella, just Ella, no last name, yep. no date of birth. And I typed in Greenwood. 
and I scrolled through every African America Ella that I could find, and that's where I found it. Eventually, after three or four pages, there was an Ella Bonham, B-O-N-H-A-M, and that's where I found her. And when I opened it up, there it was. It was Henry's wife, and that's how we found her. And it had her parents' name in there. She was a Macklemore. So that was a little trick that I used to find her. So, so imagine looking for all these kids just to find out in the morning that she was not only looking for the wrong person, but it was the wrong names. So Bowman Bonham, two totally different names, but for whatever reason, they're mixed. Mm-hmm. And that's over a couple of generations. And that's over a couple of generations. Literally within census records, one minute you see them as Bonham, then you don't see them again as Bonham until a death record and for to make, someone. And to make things even more confusing, within the same family, you see someone taking the name Bonham. And then and they're taking it Bowman. Bowman. So you're uh-huh. looking at, oh my God, this like when I tell y'all, this is just like, this is this is classic Edgefield. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. This, this is classic. If you, if anybody who's watching right now, we have a good crowd right now, and if anybody who's watching has any type of of connection to the 96th district, Edgefield, South Carolina, Saluda, any of its surrounding areas, you are about to become an expert within a year. And I'm not, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating on that because Edgefield will place in front of you every obstacle that you could ever imagine. This is for black and white families. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. the white families, they weren't that much different. Trust, no, and believe it. They were not. If basically think every kind of genealogical conundrum, barrier, issue, wrong birth year. I mean, we have people who's people filling in their death certificate or making them 15 to 20 years younger than what they actually were. Really Who was that were. this morning, Loretta? They had him down at Ernest. Ernest yeah. Gilliam. Man yeah. was born in 1892. His death record said 1913. <laughs> <laughs> we looking at this like, what? So wrong birth years, misspelled last names, derivatives of last names, kid, yeah. you know, kids with the same name. And, of yeah. course, and that's I, why you have to be patient and really, when you get an obituary, even though they're treasure troves and they're gold mines, you still have to be patient and pick it apart because what you see may not be what you see. Right. Because you have to realize you don't know who wrote that obituary. Yep. That's number one. So you don't know if it was a spouse that wrote it or a family member or a cousin or if it was Miss Jean who lived down the street who knew all the family members. Right. You don't know who's writing those obituaries. So that's why you really have to be careful and don't just assume that everything you see is everything you see. Exactly. So I want to read right now real quick. Marie Eaton Jones, she said, I'm going through that right now. Don't don't throw nothing at the um at the camera, Loretta. But guess who she's going through it with? Who? Luke Holloway. Ooh. Shut up. Mm-mm, that's a bad one. <laughs> It's a bad word. It's a bad word. word. The Holloway's are a bad word. It's a bad word. So she said, I'm going through it right now with Luke Holloway. What in the world? And we we already know. We already know. We're sorry. And then um, Catherine Hall, she says, that's me. I love Edgefield and the 96. Well, more power to you, Catherine, because they get on my nerves. See, if you could see the gray hair that I have. Oh, it's like man. individual Edgefield fan. You Old can't see mine, but I'm going to tell y'all, within these braids right here, I got an entire strip going straight up. I look like, uh, what's her name from, from the Adams family? Where she get oh, the Morticia. one strip? Morticia. Yes, when she got the one strip, I got one full strip of gray going straight up the side of my head behind my ear. And that's because of this stuff. So, yeah. And DZ, if you wouldn't mind, if you can put up image number six. Yeah, so we're going to go to what caused us to get to this point. So this is a different side of the same family that we've just been talking about. Yeah. There was a, there was a John Wiley Gilliam in and amongst those kids. Well, that touches on this. Well, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, John Wiley Gilliam, you see a lady named Lula May Walker. Lula May Walker married. Well, I'm not going to say she married. 
She had children by Wiley Harrison, John Wiley Gilliam, and Cleophis Bay Chen. Cleophis's wife is Annie Lee Peterson. When we first came across Ollie Mae Fisher, which is Cleophis and Lula's daughter, we came across her, her obituary. We were confused. So could you put the next image up, image number seven? Um, as you can see, I don't know, because they're saying up here that it's turned, it's reversed. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go through it with you guys um, because you said it was reversed. I got it. It's not reversed on mine. I know. It's not reversed on ours either. But um, anyway, so I don't have hers. Yeah, one image did okay. come back or come back reversed. So what we have is Ollie, um, is this Lula's? This is Belle Walker. Oh. Okay. That's Belle. That's right. I've got the wrong one. Well, you know what? That's actually a good one to have, mm -hmm. because if you notice in this particular um, in this particular obituary, move up just a little bit, Deezy, yeah. where it's down, where it's showing the daughters, downward. Yeah. Okay, thank you, dear. Right there. If you notice, it says that Bell had it survived. It survived by twelve daughters and four sons. Do you see the one that say Mrs. Ollie Mae Adams? Well, that's that's Ollie Mae Fisher. Now, I know you guys are saying, well, wait a minute, Donya, because you said that her mama was Lula May, and this is this says J Belle Walker Fisher. Well, that's because Belle Walker Fisher is Lula May's sister. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's her sister. So when Ali May died, and we don't have Ali May's um, obit pulled up on the thing, but when Ali May died, maybe we do. Go to the next one and say Ali May, 1940 obit. That's number eight. Oh, it's no, a census record. I, pulled, I just I saved the wrong one. Okay, well we saved the wrong one. But on Ali May's, Ali May claimed every last one of those children by Bell, which is her aunt. So when we first saw Ali May and we saw all these kids, but it said her mother was someone else and that her father was Cleophis Chen, we were totally confused because we knew Cleophis and Annie. We knew them well because Annie is a Peterson, and y'all know how Brian and I used to itch and scratch because of the Petersons because they used to drive us up a wall and down the backside of it. So Ollie wasn't mentioned in Annie's obit. Actually, can you pull up image six again? There we go. Yeah. Ollie wasn't mentioned in, in Annie's obit. So we did we were like, well, who well, wait a minute, what is this? And so that made us have to look at Lula May. And when we looked at Lula May, we we, we, we learned that Brian, you're more um politically correct. You go ahead and say that. <laughs> you're you're more politically you or 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 Nah, because she ain't politically correct either. Uh, what, what, no, I, I, point, I can say that I can be nice. What point are you trying to <laughs> You know, I can't, I can't. Look, we, we went to Lula May, and when we got to Lula May, we learned that she had not just Ollie May, but she had five oh, more kids. okay. <laughs> okay, now y'all take it from here because I, I can't, I can't. Well, one point that I want to touch on is a lot of these. Well, we're related to everyone that we've that we've spoken about today. Oh yeah, we didn't tell y'all that. We are related to all of them. All of them. Yeah. Um, and many of these people were related to each other. Over and over again. Over and over again. So you can get a sense of how many children are involved. You know, Annie Annie Lee Peterson and Cleophis had nine children together. Cleophis and Lula Mae Walker had one child together. Lula and John Wiley Gilliam had three, and then Lula and Wiley Harrison had two. Possibly. For a hot moment, possibly, true. There's a question mark over one. So mm -hmm. for a hot minute, we were confused because John Wiley Gilliam and Wiley Harrison, we thought were one and the same person because Harrison and Gilliam's, Gilliam was a name that would change to Harrison and then back to Gilliam. And Loretta, you wanna, Loretta, you wanna talk through how we distinguished that they were actually two different people? Because if I remember correctly, they were actually living in the same household. Yes, they were. They were living in the same house. You're absolutely right. Found that. That, yeah. 
That was me, but you you explain it. I'm I, I'm done with them. I'll get a headache. Well, just explain the how how we really kind of drill down between John Wiley Gilliam and Wiley Harrison. Well, okay. So basically, what happened was while we were going through it again, I pulled it up again because we were talking last night, and I'm like, y'all. Well, that wasn't last night. This might have been a couple of days ago. And I'm, we're sitting there trying to figure all this out with Lula and all these kids. And I kept saying to them, but John Wiley and Wiley, I said, that's not the same people. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I said, that's not the same people. And we found the 1940, I, I showed them the 1940 census. I said, here it is right here. This is the mom, Emma, is the mother. And she's married to a Harrison. I said, and if you notice, Emma has a son named John Wiley Gilliam, but she also has a son named Wiley Harrison. And so everybody's looking at it, and Brian got quiet again. <laughs> and and Loretta was like, I don't know why I talk to y'all. And you know, she, you know, we just we just start going off on each other. We have to, that's our venting process. But nevertheless, we had to figure it out. And we figured it out that. John Wiley Harrison, I mean, well, that Wiley Harrison and John Wiley Gilliam are half brothers. Uh-huh. And um, both of them had children by Lula Mae Walker. And where things got a little bit challenging for us was <laughs> you never see all of the children in the same household with either parent at the same time. Right. So, for instance, oh, sorry, if we can still keep that, that, keep that image up. So, for instance, Ber- um, Bernice, Bernice, who is the baby? Bernice Harrison, we think her name is Bernice H. Peterson. We believe uh-huh. that, the, Harris, we believe that the, the H may stand for Harrison and that Wiley Harrison may be her father. But she was actually adopted by her uncle. Yes, she was adopted by her uncle. His name was Riley Peterson, um, related to Annie Lee Peterson, just to let y'all know that. Um, But Riley Peterson ended up marrying Lula May's sister, V.C. And um, V.C. Walker and and Riley got married, and Riley and V.C. ended up with Bernice. We started to realize that Lula May. I want to clean this up for Lula May. Lula May died in 1936. She died very young. So her children, she really couldn't have them because she had passed on. And they had to be spread out. And this is the beauty of this whole story right here. Mm-hmm. And the fact that her family stepped up and took them. They took care of those kids. That's beautiful. But the problem for us was that we had to find them. We knew not where they went. There were six boys, I mean, there were three boys and three girls, and we couldn't find them. So. And one of the things that we had to do, because as soon as we realized that Bernice had been adopted within the family, I think we had found, who else? There was one of the other kids, Ollie Mae. We would found Ollie Mae, so we knew that she was living with another family relation. So we're like, right, well, the rest of the kids are bound to be living with some relation in some way, shape, or form. We had to go through, because again, these are lar- this is a large family. No matter how you look at it, it's a large family. We had to go through all of the sibling, all of their aunts and uncles' uh, census return for 1930 and 1940 to see if we could find them, which we did. And again, there was things like misspelled last names. We couldn't like, find the boys at first. Yeah, they were, they were, that was this morning. That was this, and we found the boys just this morning. But the thing about it is, is that, like, finding the girls, one, we happened upon Louise. We happened upon Louise because in the midst of entering stuff for one of Lula May's sisters, there was a niece listed with her daughter in her sister Rosanna's house. And I was like, watch, this going to be one of Louise's kids. And then I turn around, and I find Louise's obit, and guess what? She was one of Lula Mae's kids. So we were finding them on a happenstance almost, you know? So we ended up, the three girls went to three different sisters. 
But we were confused about these boys, like, to no end. Because it, as you can see, the boys' names are Gilliam and, and, and Walker. Well, they kept switching back and forth between those names. And it was the brilliance of Loretta. Loretta, you explain how you found the boys. I found the boys simply just thinking they have to be somewhere. We understood now that the girls, after Lula died, family members stood up. I mean, to, uh, stood up, and they each took a girl to go live with one of Lula's sisters. So where are the boys? The boys got to be somewhere. Then it dawned on me, Grandma. All people always say there's nothing like a grandma. Sure enough. Lula's mother is named Angie Walker, and I researched Angie Walker in 1940, and there were there she was with her three grandsons, yep. Lula Mae's boys. They were staying with Grandma, who was a widow, and it kind of makes sense. She was widowed. She, Cap had died. She was living by herself, and her three grandsons became providers, you know, protectors, take care of Grandma. We'll stay here with Grandma. We'll take care of her. She's a widow. She's living alone. And our sisters will go stay with one of their aunts. So this the family took them, this family took these six children and they made sure that they were not in the system and they cared for them as their own because you had, as you can see, Belle Walker, which was great that you actually made that mistake to put that one up there. Um, but Belle Walker claimed her, her niece as her daughter. So they took them in as their own children. And um, it was just, it was an awesome thing. So I have one person who just sent a message, Elizabeth Torres, and she says, I was searching for my brother's biological grandfather and realized his grandfather's surname was originally his mother's maiden name, my God. When his mother married, he didn't keep that surname but took his stepfather's. This changes his research. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. DZ, you can, you can let that go, thanks. Because that's a perfect example. You have, you probably have Walker descendants of Johnny who think that they're biologically Walkers, but they're not Walkers. They're, well, they are. They get Walker DNA from their mother. I'm but, getting PTSD again. <laughs> but they're they're Harrisons. They're Harrisons. <laughs> I'm getting PTSD again. So anyway, I mean, because all of these moves, you know, when we were doing this and um, we started to recognize and realize, like you guys know, how Brian and I, we're spiritually connected to our ancestors. Well, so is Loretta. Loretta is very connected to them. And they yeah. talk yeah. to her just as quickly as they talk to us. <laughs> and I and I promise you guys, as we were going through all of this stuff, somebody from one Yaledale family kept coming to every last one of us. And we don't know who it was, <laughs> but we just know that this whole line goes right back to my Yeldales, and we don't care. <laughs> but I'm also going to say one thing about the, about the research that we've done, to, uh, the three of us, over the last couple of days. I have never seen so many errors and mistakes made in vital records. Oh, my God. Like wrong names and death certificates, wrong names and um, marriage. Um, the marriage certificate. Everything. I'm like, what's going on? Everything. So it's like, you know, it just adds an extra layer of complexity to an already complex research problem. Right. So you guys confused. I'm seeing all of the wows, reactions, and the love. Um, did we confuse you too badly? Because this we're was. <laughs> yeah, we were. We, we were confused. I'm going to take that. No, we're not confused as we were. <laughs> we're not as bad. But we are. We, we wanted to share this with you guys because we know that we're not the only ones that's dealing with it, especially if you're doing it out of Edgefield. Because trust, know, and believe, we have other families that are like this. Mm, up and down our tree. Up and down our tree. Although I would suggest from the bitter experience of these, these two, the challenges, I would probably be more inclined to work this out on paper first. Mm -hmm then add it to the tree rather than like having to swap children all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that, I've had to change my tree several times between Ollie and Lula and trying to figure out who was who and who belonged to. And what's interesting, what I like about Ollie, what she did in her obituary, and this shows you the family love mm. when she, with her obituary, she claimed everybody. Even the families that she lived with, and they were actually her first cousins. Right. But she called them brothers and sisters. Right. right. That's just how close-knit they were. That's, That's how, how they were. were raised. They were raised as siblings. They weren't raised as 
uh, first cousins. Yeah, you know, not, uh, and it, it could be yeah. very well possible that some of the the younger generation never knew. We might be telling a story right now that they just didn't know. And if they're listening in, they're learning that their Aunt Ollie wasn't really their Aunt Ollie. She was actually their first cousin once removed or mm. second cousin, as we like to call that in, in, in most instances. But again, the, another perfect example is Eula Mae Fisher, Fuller. Sorry. Mm, 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 mm. I know, I know. So I'm, I'm only no. going to say this. Mm. We found an obit for a relation um, who, again, there, there are multiple marriages involved, kids by, by all of them, for, for all of the marriage partners, actually. Um, in her obit, it looked as though she actually had 25 children mm. because mm. that's the total number between just, I think it's about eight marriages between mm. four, four people. Come yeah. to find out, she was only the mother of four. All the other ones were stepkids, um, mm. but they all called her mother. They all so called you, her. Like Loretta was saying, you can you can feel the love and you can feel the respect that's being given, and it is beautiful. I felt anger when but we did. <laughs> as a genealogist, you just want to you want to rip your hair out because you know you're going to have to spend a couple of days very slowly, meticulously, methodically working through. One child and I hate, I hate to say it, but unfortunately, in this day and time that we live in, that's what's missing mm. from our families now, is that community, that sense of love, that sense of keeping people together. And now it's just the families are so divided and they're, and they're, they're all over the place. There's no unity with families now. There's no community anymore. Everybody's all for self. Yep. And not for, you know, keeping these families together and taking care of these kids and making sure that these kids don't go astray. And that's where we're losing our children is they don't have anybody to go to. Nobody wants to be responsible. That's not my kid. That's not my kid. It's somebody's kid. And at the, at the end of the day, does it really matter if it's your kid? Well, you know, that's also it also goes into what you and I and Brian were talking to talking about this morning, which was the fact that. The, because they don't have anybody to turn to, because they don't have anywhere to go, they're also very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the power that is handed to children these days, and I'm sorry if don't nobody like what I'm about to say, but it's too much power for kids today. They, they, they have the right to do too much. I'm sorry if y'all don't like what that that I'm saying that, but my children didn't have no power to do nothing because they weren't paying no bills in my house. They weren't paying no bills. They weren't buying no food. They weren't doing any of those things except for put except for taking up my space. So, and and I don't mean that in a bad way. I, I love my babies. I love them with everything in me. But I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna run my household and not yeah. contribute into it. But when you see these kids out here, just just realize. And you, and you wonder why they're acting the way that they are and doing the things that they're doing. These kids have no structure. None. They have no place to call home. They have no one looking out for them. And I'll be honest with you, I, I, I honestly believe a lot of these kids are scared to be out there. They don't want to be out there all wild and crazy and not knowing what to do. But what else are they going to do? They have no support behind them. None. They have no family to call, you know, to, to call upon. And so they're just out there. So when you see kids out there, be a little a little more patient and don't be so judgmental. Don't say, oh, look at him, look at him, look at him. You don't know where he's coming from. You don't know what he's working with or what he's not working with. Right. But that's what was so nice about that 1940 census where we saw one of the sons living with Angie, um, one of the grandsons living with um, Angie, um, 18 years old, working full time, 66 hour a week yes. as, as a gas station yeah. attendant. Again, it's those extra little bits of information that, that's invaluable. Um, don't have time to read Elizabeth Torres' full comment, but she makes a really, really good point. A lot of people are commenting, just, hap just really happy it's not my family. Right, um, I, I noticed that. And Tanya, yeah, that is definitely your Petersons. Trust, know, and believe it. Um, but we want to thank you guys for listening in. We, this has come short. This has come quickly. Um, but next week is Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving, so we're actually off next week. We'll be running probably a, a repeat of the previous show. Yes. And if then, you have a suggestion on a show that you'd like to see again, let us know. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can, you know, we'll run that show. Loretta, as always, it's always great talking with you and having you a part of this. Loretta is a part of the Genealogy Adventures team. Um, we we work with her all the time during research. And I don't like them. 
I don't like. That. I just want y'all to know. I don't. I don't like them. They give me nightmares. They call <laughs> questions. I can't sleep at night. I wake up at three in the morning. They get on my nerves, but I love them dearly. You see that love? Did y'all see that love? That's what. That's what love is. <laughs> so I love. How, them dearly. I so, love them dearly. I do. I do. However you plan on celebrating um, the holiday next week, have a safe one, have a joyous one, and we will be back with you in two weeks. Yes, yes. Yeah. Love you guys and, and happy Thanksgiving. All right, happy Thanksgiving. Bye.